And welcome back to Kyra 3D on the Tube. We're going to look into ZBrush today. Now, most of you probably think of this when you think of ZBrush, the ability to paint bulges and dents and stuff on your models, basically displacement painting, which is all fun and good. But uh, we're actually going to do something two-dimensional today. Up here, I'm going to go Document, New Document, I'm going to load a texture, import, okay, after I import the texture you can see it show up here in texture, and if I hover over it you can see it shows the dimensions and whatnot. So now, when I go to texture, and I choose crop and fill, is not an undoable op operation. I'm fine with that. Okay, there it is. Uh, except uh, for one thing, the uh, the material is set to that default thing. So I'm going to set this to flat color. And I'll do the operation again. Okay, good. So basically what this video is about is making seamless textures in ZBrush quite easily actually and here's how you do it actually I've seen this performed with different keystrokes in different versions of ZBrush you know from different places in the world so if you're not in North America one of those foreign countries with the funny accents and the excellent healthcare you may be actually using a different keystroke but from for this one I'm using the tilde key which is the key right above the tab key so I hold that down and then left click drag and you can see I'm able to kind of pan the texture around the document. The document never changes but the, the texture is tiled and I can move it to any place. And uh, now when you do this I can use the cloner brush to pick up a portion of the image here and then paint it on top of the seam and of course then the result is a seamless image. So let's do a little of that. All the brush things are ghosted out of this. Seems like I can select them but the whole panel is ghosted here. This is the latest version of ZBrush and they like to change the interface around just a little bit every time. So I don't know what's going on. However, if I hit F1 then I, I get this thing that pops up and now I can select my cloner brush. This is what I want. Okay, to use the cloner brush, you control click somewhere and then you paint elsewhere. And uh, you can also load up an alpha channel. I can select one of these. I'll tell you what, I'm going to load one of my own because I don't like these. Okay, I've loaded this alpha channel. So now I can use this as a brush. So control click and then paint. The only thing is my brush is too small. Control click and paint. And I'm just going to like tap it. And I might even lower the, uh, well, we don't need this. We're not doing any 3D stuff. But I might lower the intensity here. Actually, I could be using my tablet, too, but I'm, I'm using the mouse right now. If I use the tablet, I would get pressure-sensitive operations, which is, of course, optimal. So there you go. You just go around and control click somewhere and then paint out your seams wherever and however you like to do it. So I'm going to finish painting this up and then I will see you after the edit. Actually I'm not done yet but uh, I wanted to add that as you're painting along you will eventually need to 
reposition the texture in the background. So you you do some painting and then when you're ready you do the tilde keystroke thing again and move it again exposing more seams to paint out. And then you keep with the control clicking and painting out your seams. Very good. Actually I think I might be done. Let's look around. There's a little seam here. Let's take a look at the rest of the image. Alright, yeah, I think we're seam free at this point. Uh, this might not be the best image to use for a seamless texture map because it does have some very distinctive features like these spotted black marks here and stuff like that, but it's just an example. It's more about the technique than the outcome in this case. So we're good. Now, one crucial step remains. Taking what I've done here and then uh, exporting it. You cannot simply go to texture and say grab document yet. What you first must do is choose render and then choose best. And when you do that it'll give you a little text saying rendering and then your ultimate rendering time. It's very quick. Almost a second. But what that does is it renders it in the best possible quality and if I had done this, if I had exported this as a, the document as an image before doing the best feature there would be a line going across the top of the screen here which you really don't have any hint of when you're using ZBrush but trust me it'll do that so unless they fix that as a, as a bug fix that I'm not aware of so first thing to do render choose best and then texture grab doc and you can see when you hover your pointer over here it shows text on the left I just lost it shows text on the left there what it means so grab doc there it is again when I cover over it it shows a little preview on the left if I move the cursor it disappears so then you click on export and then save it you can choose Photoshop PSD or BMP or TIFF so that concludes this little example demonstration showcase thing. I'll see you next video. Bye-bye.